Before the crack of dawn, photographer Lisa Palanzi makes her way onto the sands of Gloucester's Good Harbor Beach. She's here to add to a unique collection, but she's not looking for sea glass or shells. The sun will rise at 546, but it's hard to know what we'll see at 546. She's collecting images of the rising sun. So I believe it's gonna come up to the left of that land mass right there. The first few years I had to drive around and discover where the sun was gonna rise. And now kind of look back over my archives and I see where a nice spot might be. The ritual began on January 1st, 2016, when a friend challenged Polanzi to take a photo a day for a year. I really didn't think I was gonna be able to do that, but the motivation between the two of us, doing it together was helpful. I just was waking up early, looking at the sky, and about three weeks and I knew that that was gonna be my, my project, it's gonna be sunrise. Though the early days focused on finding the best spots and the technical aspects of the photography, it quickly evolved into something much greater. So you really can't capture in a photograph the experience of the sunrise, as much as I try. <laughs> you know, you start to see the color on the tips of the clouds and then it blooms into something amazing. And then to share that experience with strangers on the beach too. And you just have this instant bond. It's probably early on, maybe in the first few weeks. I was so grateful to witness what I was witnessing. I don't know, it just was overwhelming that I put my forehead on the sand and felt, you know, that connection to the earth and connection to source or God or, you know, however people like to describe that, that presence. After completing the challenge with 365 days of sunrise photos in hand, through early mornings, rain, cold, Palanzi felt no desire to stop. She would continue adding to her collection, though no longer daily, for the next six years. Of the chosen photos, I probably have about 3,000, but to get to that 3,000, I'll take anywhere from 40 would be like a shorter day, but most days it's, you know, 80 to 100 shots. That's almost a quarter of a million photos. Sunrise for me represents, you know, the hope and opportunities of a new day, a fresh start. Tomorrow's behind us. And there's always miracles if you're looking for them. When a flood of negative campaign ads and unsolicited fundraising emails herald a coming election season, it's easy to long for simpler times. Days when a candidate could just print their face on a button and the act of wearing it was a peaceful sign of support, no riots required. Meet Michael Dunham, a political items collector with more than 100 years of material from 1920s New York Governor Al Smith. He was the first Catholic nominee. Nominee. To current Massachusetts Governor Mara Healy and a whole bunch of guys named Kennedy. But this was new stuff when I was a kid. You can imagine it now it's, it's 55 years old. Bobby Kennedy, return to greatness, 68. So I started when I was eight years old. My father collected trains. My mother collected country tin. So it was in your genes with the collecting. So they, they were pickers before they called them pickers. In terms of collecting, how did you ultimately settle on politics? I love the presidents. I mean, I could name every president even when I was 10. Halloween. Everybody went downtown to get candy. I went into the Humphrey office and there's candy and I don't want candy. I want the Humphrey buttons. You don't see people wearing buttons that no, much you, anymore. You, almost never. It costs about the same amount of money, hard to believe, to make a t-shirt than a button. So t-shirts are gonna get much more visibility. That was probably the thinking behind this Robert Kennedy 1968 disposable paper dress. But these days, the larger issue is not the lack of collectibles, it's the lack of collectors. Young people don't collect at all. They don't collect stamps, coins, baseball cards. They collect followers. Yes. Collectors create an important bridge to our past. Today, because of collectors like Dunham, I'm able to hold a 1918 paper fan made in support of a woman's right to vote. So this is would have been held up by women uh, campaigning for suffrage. Look at that, vote for the women of Massachusetts. Baseball fans. And this fans. gives you a map 
of the states that have already approved Correct. suffrage. Wow. See, that, that's the one thing about all this stuff. None of this was, was supposed to be saved. After the election, it was all supposed to be thrown away. It was all disposable. Right. But you have gone around hoovering it all up. That's right. And there's Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Dunham does say the polarization seen in today's politics has absolutely trickled into the hobby, to the point that even collectors tend to avoid sharing their personal politics. Still ahead, a store with a little something for everyone.